Thank you, Marcia. And it's a great joy for us all, and I'm sure all the global press, to hear this beautiful answer and to understand that the light of God is just identical with consciousness, consciousness in its transcendental state, intelligence in its transcendental pure state, and that far from seeing it, everything is seen by it. It is, of course, the basic principle of the peace palaces that Maharshi just mentioned, groups of individuals, professional, permanent, peace-creating groups who will together, at the same time, through transcendental meditation and yogic flying, experience the light of God, experience transcendental consciousness, and make the flame, as Maharshi said, burn very brightly and radiate very intensely peace into the world. One journalist, however, asks about this experience, a very interesting point. Maharshi says that actually it is only the functioning of the total brain, rather it is only possible for the brain to function totally when the experience of transcendental consciousness is there when this experience of the light of God is there in individual life. But the journalist points out that actually the human brain is quite a small thing. It's a few inches this way and that way. It's, it's very finite, quite small in its physical structure compared to infinity. How, the journalist asks, is it possible for such a small, finite structure to actually have the experience of what is infinite and unbounded? Very beautiful question. And the answer is so beautiful. All experiences can be understood on two levels. Experience of silence, different degrees of silence, an experience of different degrees of dynamism. Silence and dynamism, different degrees of silence, different degrees of dynamism. Whatever the experience, this is ordinary, everyone understands, whatever the experience, that corresponding brain has to function when one sees through the eyes, some part of the brain is active. When one hears from the ears, some other part of the brain is active. Now, in the brain that sees, there are two values, two capacities, two qualities. See, something silent, or see dynamic part of sight. See dynamism, see silence. Hear dynamism, hear silence. So in each experience value, there are two experiences, but they take uh, they take place one after the other. When you are seeing silence, then you are not seeing dynamism. When you are seeing dynamism, then you are not seeing silence. Now you can imagine a state where you see finest part of silence, and finest part of dynamism. Two things at the same time. Two things at the same time. And silence and dynamism is easy to understand. They are opposite values. Silence and dynamism, they are two opposite qualities. And when these two opposite qualities, in their very fine state, 
our experience together, then that part of the brain which sees silence and that part of the brain which sees dynamism, silence and dynamism, silence and dynamism, silence and dynamism, least value of silence and least value of dynamism, total brain functions. Because two things are opposite, <laughs> opposite to each other. So in the gross state, they are most vigilant. Dynamism is vigilant so that the silence may not swallow it. Silence is vigilant so that dynamism doesn't swallow it. But when the silence is in its least state, then dynamism in its least state, they are most alert on each other, but they are a unity together in their most silent silence and most dynamic, most dynamic and most silence. This is infinity. Si infinite silence, infinite dynamism, almost, suppose, almost infinite silence, almost infinite dynamism, almost infinite silence, almost infinite dynamism. Now the question was how the small brain would experience infinity. Now this is how a small, small brain experiences almost infinity with almost dynamism, and that is pure intelligence, pure consciousness, transcendental consciousness, fully awake consciousness, infinity quality of silence, almost infinity quality of silence. So the brain doesn't have to be big in order to experience infinity. It experiences almost, almost nil value of silence with almost nil value of positivity. So both nil. In Sanskrit Vedic literature language, it is called Atyanta Bhav. Atyanta Bhav means absolute abstraction. Absolute abstraction. And in this absolute abstraction, there is nothingness created by deep silence and deep <laughs> dynamism created by the faint value of these two and then it is fully awake consciousness or fully awake intelligence. This is transcendental consciousness. This in the Vedic language is called Parmevyoman. Parmevyoman means beyond the, uh, beyond speech. It's beyond speech. Because it's almost nothing, <laughs> almost nothing of silence and almost nothing of dynamism. Both are there. Both together constitute absolute abstraction. Almost absolute, we should say almost absolute abstraction. This is called samadhi. Samadhi is transcendental consciousness. That samadhi, intellect, is in absolute balance. Balance of what? Balance of 
silence and dynamism, silence and dynamism, absolute balance of silence and dynamism. This is the supreme value of relationship, supreme value of relationship. This is Vedant and this is extreme value of karma and this is value of yoga, yoga, karma, Vedanta, and here is the value of Ved, <laughs> silence and dynamism, silence and dynamism, Ved. So, brain doesn't have to become too big in order to experience infinity. Infinity, and now another angle, huh? another angle, it's a very delightful uh, area to dwell on. Another angle will, will be silence is infinite silence is made of infinite points of silence. Infinite dynamism is made of infinite number of points of dynamism. So point of silence and point of dynamism. That means remains of silence, almost nothing, almost very necessary, almost is very necessary because we are talking of some experience. We are talking of some experience. So this experience makes the consciousness fully awake in terms of silence and dynamism both together, together. Yoga or unity comes from this level. And this is the level of the transcendental field of consciousness, Atma, Chetana. Chetana means wakefulness. Wakefulness, complete wakefulness. Now, in this wakefulness, two opposite values are fully awake. In that, our consciousness, our intelligence, is a field of all possibility. That is what one has to cultivate. This is education that all possibilities have to be fully awake and through practice all time fully awake. That means the man will not make mistakes, the man will, will not uh, falter, he will not lose his things and all that, all that. The whole thing is completely uh, fully awake, that's all, eh? fully awake, atma, self, or soul, which is the deepest value of one's own personality, self-consciousness, self-referral consciousness. Just the word consciousness relates to wakefulness. And from where, <laughs> one more interesting thing in it, nah? one more interesting thing is that this wakefulness, <laughs> this wakefulness, how it is fully awake, how this state is wakeful, because Silence and dynamism, they are two opposite qualities. Silence doesn't bear with dynamism, dynamism doesn't bear with silence. So when they are put together, they are on the highest alertness, each of them, highest alertness of silence, highest alertness of 
dynamism both are fully alert so that the other may not devour the other. This. Just, just like, you know, the wrestlers, two wrestlers come to come to meet each other. And both want to win over the other. This wants to win over this, this wants to win over this. So on the on the level of meeting point, both are fully alert, totally alert, totally awake. Like that, silence and dynamism being opposite in value, they are afraid of each other. So there is a theory <laughs> in the Vedic literature. There is a theory in the Vedic literature that all natural law also is based on <laughs> fear, fear-based reality, fear-based reality. One may not devour the other, one may not devour the other. And when they are both on the point level, point of dynamism, point of silence, point of... They are on the uh, <laughs> on the highest level of their alertness, and this is what makes them together as consciousness, abstract noun consciousness. He is also conscious fully. He is also conscious fully. Both of them together are. Consciousness. They are the expression of consciousness. So from here the word comes to be consciousness. Because of the opposite values coexisting. Opposite values coexisting is the word consciousness, self referral consciousness. So in the self-referral consciousness, the, the, there is a field of all possibility. You can expose from point silence to infinity of silence. You can expose from point dynamism to infinity dynamism. But on that level, pure consciousness is a field of all possibilities. That is why this is the target of education. I want to make my attention, I want to make my consciousness so fully awake that nothing is impossible for me, either in the field of silence or in the field of dynamism. Silence and dynamism, silence. This is the quality of Atma, consciousness, consciousness, field of all possibilities. And therefore, experience of this level of all possibilities and stabilizing this experience is culturing human life educating human life, culturing human life. So those who do not practice transcendental meditation, they remain deprived of this field of all possibilities in their consciousness. And that is why they make mistakes, they make decisions from their drowsy level of consciousness drowsy and then they make mistakes and they make all kinds of negative things like that, like that. Transcendental meditation, this experience of abstraction, samadhi, this is yoga, samadhi, this is yoga, samadhi, this is unfolding of the inner potential which is field of all possibilities. So we say, 
unfold your cosmic potential in one little word cosmic potential field of all possibilities you'll be able to do anything you'll be able to undo anything it's a very beautiful theme of educating oneself without that life is like the two values of life in the market huh? a retailer and a wholesaler a retailer also is busy whole day in his dealings wholesaler also busy but restfully busy <laughs> Wholesaler is restfully busy, retailer is busily busy, <laughs> and hawker, so much exercise he has to do, go and shout aloud, have oranges, take my orange. So retailer and wholesaler, those parents who do not teach their children to be fully awake in their awareness, they are not. They are not displaying their parental role. They don't know how to bring up their children, that's all. Education is lacking and throughout the world like that, like that, like that. But the possibility for everyone is so beautifully open that one should be cosmically awake, field of all possibilities, atma, know thyself, total knowledge of the self, involved in thinking, speaking, behaving, the very beautiful different aspects. That's a very good question, you know? very good question. <laughs>